Hey everybody, this is Jesus Rivera with Tame the Wolves Dog Training. I'm making a short video here on loose leash walking. We're going to be using Ace as our demo dog. So Ace is already pretty well managed when walking on the leash. I'm just going to show you step by step what I do with a dog that, that tends to pull. Um, for this tutorial we're going to be using simple tools we're not going to go into the prong collars we're going to be using a simple slip lead you can use a flat lead collar um, and a standard six foot leash so what we're going to do is we're going to start off by walking him back and forth to see how he is on his walk today and then we'll see what measures we'll take to correct anything all right you're probably also wondering where you can get this bomb t-shirt you can get them at tamethewolves.com slash apparel or just visit our site and and go into apparel step number one the first thing you want to do when you have a dog that tends to pull a lot is tire him out inside the house before you go out for a walk a tired dog isn't going to get into as much trouble as a dog that just woke up um, and has all that built-up energy so you can do whatever you want uh, by exercising him. You can do uh, toss the ball inside the house. Excuse me, buddy. You can use what I like to use a lot, which is the flirt pull. If you don't know what that is, I'll add a little clip of me tiring Ace out here. Um, if you have a smaller dog, you can do it inside the house. Let me see what else. Uh, if you have a treadmill like me, that's like the easiest way. Just get him to work out for a good 10, 15 minutes before uh, going on for your normal daily walk or training him. Let me see what else. Uh, you can get creative. You know your dog more than I do. You know what tires them out. And that's just a good way to prep him for success before going out for a walk. Remember, out in the world, there are so many unpredictable uh, distractions. You got squirrels, you got birds, you got other dogs people whatever triggers your dog it's out there you can't control it so it's best to prevent it and to prepare your dog for the daily walk by just tiring him out you can even do like some obedience training if you do obedience with your dog uh, get your dog into the mindset of obeying you just simple sits downs comes uh, name recognition things like that can prepare your dog for, for its walk and, and obeying you. All right, so this is a short clip of Ace working out with its fur pole. All right, now that we have him pretty tired out, the next step is to find what your dog finds rewarding in this case i'm not going to be using any food rewards just because my dog uh is motivated by my verbal praise so what that means is just by me telling him good boy he finds that self-rewarding even petting him um he does love food and i do use food in some cases if i can avoid it i will um you don't always want to be using food um just because you you tend to build that as the resource, um, as the reward. And if I don't have to use it, why? So again, get your dog on the standard flat leash. I'm using a slip lead for in this case. Um, if you were gonna be using food, I highly suggest on having a, a training pouch adjusted to your waist. Um, I also recommend to choose the side you prefer your dog to be on. In my case, it's the left. Um, that's where, I, if the dog's going to be on the left side, I would strap on the, the tree pouch on the left side. That way it builds like a sort of focus for the dog to want to look up at you in a way. But if you're not using food, you're using a toy, then maybe have the toy um, held up here or in between your armpit on the left side of your dog is going to be on the left side. Let me see. All right, and so in this case, we're just going to be using verbal praise and, and, and petting for the reward. I have Ace right here. 
boy. All right. Get him set up. Oh, before I forget. So if your dog is pulling forward, you should completely avoid and following him. Uh, so if he's pulling forward, I want you to stop walking. Um, if, if he pulls and you walk, what you're getting here is you're teaching him that he can keep moving forward. And you might not think that, but it's a it's self-rewarding for the dog. It's learning that if it pulls, it's going wherever it wants. And you, by following him, are teaching him that he's doing the right thing, which in that case, it's wrong. So if the dog pulls forward, pulls to the side, to the right, you completely stop moving. And what I want you to do is say this way and switch directions. Uh, you're gonna have to repeat this a lot. Um, but with repetition, you get you start seeing results day by day. You might even see results that same training session. But you wanna teach a dog that if it's pulling this way, you're gonna go left or right or even switch direction, go back. So if, this is, if you have a heavy duty puller, what I want you to do is set up a start point and an end point and just practice in that back and forth in that direction up until you get to the point where the dog's not even trying to pull anymore because it's going to get boring for the dog. This is the time you need to add a little bit more distance to your, to your setup. So if you're doing uh, 10 feet back and forward and your dog's not pulling, maybe do 15, 20 feet next time. If your dog's struggling, then maybe take it back a notch. Um, but you're gonna see results right away once you start uh, exercising your dog before your walks. And you're probably thinking, okay, I'm, I wanna walk my dog so I can tire him out. But there's other ways you can tire your dog inside. Um, you can even also do mental stimulation toys. Um, Kongs before walks, puzzle toys. I'm not a big fan of those, but whatever works for your dog. All right. All right, so I'm gonna position him on the left side. Get him into a little sit. Sit. Um, you wanna have the leash where it's you're not you're not basically choking your dog. You wanna have it where just kind of like a J shape. You're gonna give your dog some slack. You're gonna start off by I like to say this way and start walking. Um, he might not pull, but you're, I'm still gonna demonstrate as if he was pulling. So Ace, this way. This way. Turn, keeping your dog to the left side. Sit. And I like to get the dog into the routine of sitting, asking for a sit. Um, anytime I stop moving, by repeating this, it's going to turn into an automatic sit. So we're going to try it again. This way. This way. This way. Walking forward now. This way. You turn around, give the dog to follow you. This way. Good boy, sit. Yes. And then you, you would give your dog the treat, whatever you're using for, tri for, the, for the reward. Sit. Good boy. Go ahead and try that again. This way. This direction. Another thing. If you're walking forward and your dog's sniffing around and walking really slow. Um, what you tend to do is you, you wait for him. You walk to his pace. What I like to do is I like to say this way and then walk my normal speed. Because if the dog finds out that if it stalls and it sits and it waits and all you're going to do is wait for him, then he's going to keep doing that. Um, he's going to be reinforced. He figured out, okay, I want to sit down and wait. My owner's going to wait for me. Um, let me do it next time and it's gonna work and most likely before you watch this video it is gonna work so you never wait for the dog if you want him to to sit before potty start getting him into the sit before taking him to the grass um, if you're walking and this happens a lot where you're walking your dog and it unexpectedly takes a, starts pulling towards the grass you should never follow that because again you're rewarding that behavior so what I would do is I would ask him into a quick sit get him to sit before going on the grass, and then allowing him to go to the spot he wants to visit, but it's on your terms, not his. All right, I'm gonna see this again. This way. This way. This way.
this way? Hey, sit. Good. Alright, so Ace is pretty good with this. Um, if it really depends on the tools you're going to be using for the walking. I'm not a big fan of the easy walk harness, which is the front clip. Uh, it's attached to the front clip. If you were to pull, if the dog were to pull, it would be redirected. It wouldn't have the same strength. But I find in many cases, dogs can easily get out of those. Um, and they're basically what they are, a tool. I like to practice, if I can, a lot on tools that I use daily and I have on hand all the time so I'm pretty simple and I just like using slip leads and flat lead collars um, I have used prongs in the past for for walking and later down the line shh, <laughs> later down the line I have used um, the, the e-collars for some corrections Ace. all right guys all right guys thank you for watching my video Again, if you're asking where the heck can I get that bomb shirt, go to our website, tamethewolves.com, under apparel, and pick it out. They come in this heather gray, they come in black, they come in white. I also have t-shirts for the summer, got some tank tops, com tank tops coming out next week. I have the hoodies, um, it's still pretty chilly out there, Okay, some days. So stock up on your merch. Um, there is a promo code uh, Easter thirty. It's gonna be for thirty uh, for two days. It ends on midnight Easter. And if you have any questions, shoot me a, a message. For those that have my number, give me a call. Um, we are offering Zoom uh, online services. Um, we got thirty minute videos and we have hour videos. Prices vary, so give me a call and we'll see what we can do. So I'm gonna be making a short series. Uh, I'm gonna be working with different dogs in these videos um, so you guys can get an idea and maybe even answer some of your questions when with different types of dogs pulling. We'll see how that goes and I'm probably gonna be posting once a week. I'm not sure yet, but check us out. Give us a like, and share us and pick up some merch, all right?